Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me, your host, Tommy Gilbert, as we take a seat at the table with coaches and student athletes to get a behind the scenes look into Titan athletics. From in depth breakdowns to fun stories, you can catch it all right here on Titan Table Talk. Hello, Titan fans, Titan family. Welcome inside the Ames Library podcast studio for week 11 of Titan Table Talk. We've got a little football, we've got a little men's basketball and women's volleyball on the docket for you today. A very exciting, very eventful weekend in Titan athletics overall. And first and foremost, glad as always to welcome in head football coach Norm Esch. Coach, first congrats on a very exciting victory up at Carroll this weekend. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, as some may have seen, a rather big announcement came out yesterday afternoon. Any uh, any comments on that one? No, it was um, something that I had planned to do this year. Um, and my saying is there's no good time to retire, but there's the right time to retire. And so I, I kind of knew that this was going to be my last year and that was because of the seniors we had. We had 34 seniors, and I didn't want them to be in a transition year because that's hard. When if I would have retired before this year, they would have had a new coach. It could have disrupted their senior year. Um, so I, I kind of, you know, stayed that one more year to see them through. And um, I thought we were going to be really, really good, and we are. And so kind of plan on it, but when you announce it that kind of changed several times, you know, it was going to be maybe before the season, but then I didn't like that because it was going to be about me and not the football team. And then it was going to be before homecoming. And I thought that would diminish homecoming. So I, I was thinking more of what would be best for our, our football team and what's be best for our football program. Now um, you do need to make that announcement. I think, either when I'm doing it right before the last game or right after the last game because you need to get someone in pretty quick and maintain recruiting and, and that type of thing. So it worked out well. Um, actually, the Jack Sigma basketball tournament helped me because uh, there was two people that were instrumental in me getting the job. And of course, it was Coach Denny Bridges. He was the athletic director. Uh, took a great chance on me with no college experience. And... Um, gave me an opportunity, so I'm always going to be indebted to him. But the person that was in his ear, I know who's in his ear, was Jack Sigma. And Jack and I were really good friends. And um, I think Jack put put his, his reputation on me. And I think Coach Bridges listened, and now we're sitting here 38 years later. So good timing. And uh, kids know, and... They also know we have to finish the season, though, too. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, with that, talking about it wanting to be about the team and not about you, they've got that one week to appreciate this is our last week with Coach Ash. It's not something that's hanging over them the whole season. It can just be the, the final week of, okay, we come off a, a really exciting victory, clinched a winning record in CCW play. Um, regardless of what happens this weekend, walking away with five CCW victories this year and, and playing – Wash you and Wheaton really close, um, as well as, of course, North Park. But um, a lot of high notes this year, a lot of very exciting ball games to go out on. And, of course, one of those was just two days ago from when we're filming this, a 24-21 victory up at Carroll. Um, obviously a, a tough game for the defense last year facing the Pioneers, one that's going to stick in your craw for a little bit sure. over, you know, about a 12-and-a-half, 13-month span. And the defense shows up and – First of all, really rested, only on the field for 19 minutes on yeah. Saturday, but show up and allow 184 total yards on the field for 19 minutes, allow 10 first downs the entire game, uh, 60 rushing yards in, in a game that was close. It's not like we led the whole time and they were having to, to pass the ball. I mean, what can you say about that defensive performance on Saturday? Well, it, it, was, a, it was a really kind of weird game because we were behind, but all the stats would show that we should be winning. And so... <laughs> There was a, probably three or four key plays um, that we made mistakes and we gave, you know, Carroll opportunity. One was a, uh, a long pa uh, pass downfield that could set up a score. One was a kickoff return that set up a score. <coughs> so that wasn't on, on them so much. It was on us. 
And then I thought our offense, we were moving the ball and um, playing well and, and doing some really good things. So I'm just glad that our kids really stayed focused and they refused to lose. I mean, they, they were determined to win that ball game. And it was fun to, to be around them and you could sense it on the sideline. And, and getting that ball back on the 25-yard line, our own 25 with, I think, probably seven minutes to go. Yeah. And taking that all the way down the field and scoring with 30 or 20 seconds on the clock, it, it was just a great feeling. And uh, it was a really good bus ride home. It really was. Um, and Carol, I respect Carol. Um, they've done a great job of turning that program around. And they're probably one of the more difficult teams to beat at home. They play really well at home. And I was concerned about that, but uh, we went in there and got the win, and now we want to finish this season. You know, we, we talk about me retiring, but I, I, I made it made it clear to the players that you still got me for one more week, so I'm not going to change. <laughs> and so I'm going to hold you accountable, and there's certain things you have to do, and, and one of those is preparing to beat North Central. Yeah, of course. Um, and, you know, talk about those couple of big plays for the Pioneers, both of them, the 68-yard touchdown pass, the 50-4-yard kickoff return that set the score, both came right after Titan touchdowns. Yeah, and it, it's, that's the frustrating and, part because we just would grind it out and get the ball in the end zone, and, you know, you could, sell, you could sense some momentum, and we just it would just flip on us. And we talked to our players about that a lot, and we – We've had a trouble. We've had trouble with that all year. I mean, in the games that we should have won, we didn't, which would be, I think, in my eyes, Morshu. We had a chance to win. Uh, Wheaton, we had a chance to win, and it, and definitely at North Park, we just did some things to allow them to gain momentum and confidence. And uh, you can't do that, especially against good teams like Warshu and and Wheaton. Uh, but that wasn't the case on uh, on on Saturday. And it wasn't the case against Augustana, too. I mean, we've done it back-to-back -back here. So yep. I'm saying that because, you know, let's finish this thing. Let's, con let's continue to improve those things against North Central. Yeah, and that was, you know, one of those things we'd hit on a few different times this year so far. And it talked about that reversing a little bit against Augustana. But, it, I mean, you talk about a, a tough touchdown to allow right before the half. Carroll comes right back out um, and scores again. And then on the next three drives – the defense allows one first down total yeah. among those three drives and pretty much just slams the door. He had the Caden Youngy 36-yard field goal. And then, of course, I mean, the seven-minute and two-second drive, whatever it was, that basically ate the entire rest of the clock. Uh, it's it's about as beautiful a thing as you can look at as, it was, as a play it caller. Fun, as it was coach, very fun yeah. to be part of, yes. they did it. The, our players did a great job. And and we had some key plays. I mean, Dermot Smythe did a nice job, our quarterback. And Miles Key, you know, he's a veteran. He's an all-conference player. He stepped up made some big catches. Uh, Jahari Scott ran really, really hard. And Danny Kent really ran hard. And, and, it, I, and I think our offensive line has been playing really well all year. Um, Carroll was very difficult. They, we, they run a kind of a junk defense. They bring a lot of things. And, and we – Majority of the time, picked everything up. They got they caught us a couple times, but all those things have to be working together for you to win. And and we did that on on Saturday against Carroll. Yeah, and looking ahead to this year, uh, this week, of course, Senior Day on Saturday against North Central. Uh, tough assignment there is in Division Three. We all know that. Um, but uh, you know, four days to prepare, four days for a talented defense and a very senior laden defense to see what they can do against a great offense. Um, and, and, you know, four more days for you to spend at practice with this group of nearly three dozen seniors. And any, uh, any first of all, the plans on Saturday, is it 1245 recognition, or is it going to start a little before? We're going to start earlier with the number of seniors we have. And we also have to do the, um, well, also we recognize the dance team and also the um, cheerleaders. And so it's going to take a while. So we're, we're going to have to warm up a little earlier and, and, and recognize them and then, get ourselves prepared for a, a great Division Three football game. Yeah, should be a lot of fun. A 1 p.m. kickoff against the Cardinals on Saturday at Tucci Stadium, but you want to run early, catch the pomp and circumstance, appreciate 
Coach Ash's last time on the field as the head coach at Tucci Stadium. Right. I won't be going too far, I would imagine, in the future. We'll talk about some of those future plans. We'll talk about uh, you know a little bit more of a chance to just look back at your time at Illinois Wesleyan next week, hopefully, if we're able to have you on on Monday. Um, but we're you know coming off such an exciting week and trying to keep the focus a little bit more on football this week, and we thought was uh, appropriate yes. and give you a chance at least to you know acknowledge the fact that we got one more to hopefully win this weekend. And yep. Coach, good luck this weekend, and uh, thanks for joining us as always. Thank you, and uh, uh, it'll be a it'll be a fun game. I mean, to see the seniors play their last game, and and to me me be part of it, and uh, yeah, it, it'll be it'll be kind of emotional for a lot of people. Yeah. It certainly will, and uh, looking forward to getting to be there for it and hopefully one more beautiful fall day at Tucci. I think we have good weather. We've had good <laughs> weather all year, so that's a positive. I can get behind that for sure, yes. 1 p.m. kickoff. Uh, you can check IWSports.com for the exact start time for the Senior Day ceremonies once that is finalized. We'll be back in a little bit with Marco Anderson and Trey Bazell. Why is Illinois Wesleyan the number one school in Illinois for jobs? Maybe it's because we're the AND University. That's right, A-N-D, AND. Here you can explore the arts AND study in a pre-professional program, double major AND play a sport, do an internship AND study abroad. Your opportunities are endless. Tap or click now to explore Illinois Wesleyan and start your free application today. And welcome back inside the podcast studio. It is time to talk men's basketball with a pair of Titan seniors, Marco Anderson and Trey Bazell. A very exciting weekend, to say the least, gentlemen. Um, well, we'll talk a little bit about all the hoopla and special events surrounding the Sigma tournament in a little bit. Let's just talk games first. We'll start on Friday. Uh, 93-81 victory over 24th ranked Cal Lutheran in their return trip from when we went out there over winter break last year in a game that really wasn't quite as close most of the way as the final score looked. Um, obviously, you guys, you know, October 15th practice start date, got some workouts in before that as well. The two exhibition games, how'd it feel to finally actually get out there and put things together against a really good Division three team and open yourself up? I mean, a 16-point lead at halftime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it felt great. Um, the two exhibition games definitely got us ready. And it was definitely nice to play some D3 competition, especially after playing Butler. And then, obviously, first game of the year, already amped up. And it was nice because we had a little bit of extra motivation playing Cal Lutheran as they beat us last year at their place. So that definitely added a little bit of motivation for us to start the year off. And it took us a little bit to get going. Uh, the first seven minutes or so, we were definitely a little rusty. Had to get our feet underneath us. But once we got going, we really started clicking well. I mean, we only had, like, 10 points in like the first six minutes and still scored 93 so we're really able to get it going and it was just really good to play another team uh didn't finish the second half quite the way we wanted to but still first game had to get things going and then we picked it up night two and really got it going then so yeah just going off that like we've been practicing against each other for so long it gets annoying especially for me and harry just banging <laughs> with each other it's not fun uh but yeah it was fun to play in front of the shirk fans great atmosphere and glad we could get two wins, especially against Calu, who kind of embarrassed us last year when we only scored 52. But yeah. yeah, and Kingsman played a really tough defensive game going out there, and wasn't our best shooting night either. Kind of you know one of those you know, almost everything that could have gone wrong did to some degree, at least on the offensive side. But a very very different story, of course, on Friday night. I mean, career highs or tying career highs across the board. Hakeem six for eight, 17 points, 13 for Carlo, 12 for Jackson, 11 for Mason. 14 points for you. I think one shy of your career high. Is that right? On, on yeah, something like that. Four for five from distance, along with three blocks. I mean, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know, you know, the three-point shooter's <laughs> got to get the blocks in there somewhere. <laughs> is, that, is that a career high at any level in blocks, going back to like junior high at least, or have you had more? Uh, than I that? mean, in high school, I played a little bit different level of competition. Now I'm one of the shorter <laughs> guys on the team. Used to be one of the taller ones, so I, pro point. I probably got more than three in high school. I don't know for sure, but I'm just guessing. I probably did, but you no, know, it definitely feels good. I'm feeling a lot better this year, health-wise. Able to get the floor a lot better, so. We're going to do more on the defensive end as well as offense. Yeah, and of course, uh, Marco, six rebounds a block for you to go along with eight points on four for six shooting. Um, but it was really, I mean, a very similar story both nights when you look at shooting percentage. I mean, 57% for the Titans on Friday, 56% Saturday. 
okay, that's a great, and that's not going to happen all the time, but it's a great night, and a lot of it's coming from moving the ball around and getting off good shots. But then, you know, what this team really hung its head on last year was defense, and then you're looking at a two top 25 teams and one that's got, you know, the National Player of the Year out there and Logan Pearson, and you're talking about a 41% from the field for the Kingsmen on Friday night, 38% for Platteville on, uh, on Saturday, and I mean... Uh, that's it's got to make a lot of people in the locker room very happy to be able to walk back in and see that just you know it's one thing to win an exciting game 96 to 94 but defense travels defense shows up against great teams and big games and a little extra pride in that defensive effort on on both nights I'm guessing Yeah, yeah I feel like we practice defense I mean it's every day shell drill we do it every single practice uh you know defense just wins championships and we've like learned that won the CCIW last year and so we just got to keep on continuing to defend and uh on the offensive side it's any any single day one of us could be the leading scorer we have we're so deep and it's just impressive how we all connect together so well um especially in that second game uh the cutting on both sides was just great just finding if someone got stuck just finding open lane and passing was awesome too Yep, offensively, I definitely think it was one of our, my best games I've been a part of on just sharing the ball. Really executed our game plan well on both ends, especially on defense. I thought the coaches put together a great plan of having Roper guard Pearson at the start and then switching Akeem onto him. I would think Roper's length was able to get to him, then Akeem's just a dog on defense, could just bother anybody. But we really executed the game plan really well on defense. I mean, everyone did their job, everyone was just locked in, and really holding one of the top teams in the country to 66 points is really impressive and really something for us to build on for the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean, that defensive combo on Pearson, 5 for 13 from the field, had to pick up 10 points at the charity stripe. And also, I mean, held to 23 minutes with foul trouble, mm-hmm. too, throughout a lot of that ball game. Um, you know, a few extra minutes for you on the floor there with Harry getting a little early foul trouble against uh, against Platteville. But it's one of those things, you know, when you look at the physical matchup, you know, 1 through 10, really, yeah. against the Pioneers. Um, there's a lot of times, maybe in the last few years, you would have been a little worried about Harrison having two fouls two and a half minutes into the game or whatever it was, and with the depth and the size mm-hmm. of this team. I mean, it's 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 easy to create a physical mismatch against really good teams. I mean, you look at the points in the paint from this weekend, and that's a pretty good start. I mean, 52 to 30 on Friday, 56 to 18, which is stunning to look yep. at on yep. Saturday. And, you know, it's, it's going to work out that way every day. No, it's not. But uh, – there's plenty of D3 teams that are very skilled. There's plenty that have a lot of size. The combo of the extreme size and skill that's on this Titan roster this year is very, very difficult to beat. Um, and it, you know, it's it's part of it, again, is like you have to be willing to share the ball and you have to be willing to share the minutes out there to keep everybody rested. But again, when you can go 10 deep and not lose a lot, it helps you stay fresh too, especially back-to-back games. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to, to ask you guys a little bit, because I know, you know if you're here at the Shirk Center a lot this weekend or a few of the, the alumni who are around a lot, you probably saw some of the other special events and things that surround the Sigma tournament. Um, but really the goal with starting this tournament um, was to, to make it a real experience for three great teams coming in and then, of course, the Titans every year and all the alums and donors who come back for it. And give us a little window into Jack Sigma Hall of Fame Invitational Weekend off the courts and, and what else goes on? Yeah, I mean, Friday we had a luncheon with all four teams, which was super fun. Uh, obviously, the GOAT of Wesley and Jack Sigma was there, which was awesome to hear from him. Saw a bunch of his highlights, saw the Sigma move uh, while we were eating lunch. And uh, the sponsor of the tournament, Dr. Bob Spear, got to say a few words, which was awesome. Big thanks to him, huge supporter of the Titans. Um, couldn't happen without him. But, yeah, it's just, like, super fun to, you know, see the other teams not on the court um, and just hang out with the team as well. It's a great experience, and obviously talking to alums is uh, super fun. Yeah, just hearing the stories from the guys that played with Jack and just the guys after him, uh, the national championship team, those guys are around a lot. So it's really cool to see all the alumni come back and watch us play. Um, they also know they had to recognize a lot of all-conference players. So got to see some guys that we played with in our four years, Matt Larritz, Corey No. Luke Yoder last year. So it's really cool to see them come back and support us. I'm uh, really happy we played really well, put a great weekend performance out there for them. 
Um, but yeah, we just have to thank Bob Spear again, great sponsor. And then also uh, President Zanger uh, was really supportive this weekend. He was around a lot his first year being here. And it just is really nice to see his support being at our games. He also talked at the luncheon and just talked about how much he loves, you know, this university and everything that's going on. So it's just really awesome to see all that going on. Yeah, and it is funny, you know, to have a, a president who's truly dream job for the last 15-plus years, as he's, he's said in various arenas, is to be the president at <laughs> Illinois Wesleyan. Um, and you, you see that already for sure. But even, you know, to having Jack Sickman out on the court in the uh, in the backyard of the campus house, <laughs> <while> the <laughs> president's house, I mean, just one of those things you look at and like, mm, that's that's pretty cool. He loves you know, Titan, if, uh, the Titan way, yeah. <laughs> Um, think uh, as I was saying to a couple of our our sack reps last week, we were the first ones to be out on that court shooting around and playing pickleball right after it was painted. So you actually got to break in the court for an NBA Hall of Famer. Right, so sweet. Uh, congratulations! Put that, put that on your resume later this year. Yeah. Um, but you know, as you kind of look ahead to the rest of the non-conference schedule this fall, and you two obviously in a leadership role, um, leadership capacity on the team, um, I, I think going to be a little bit more national attention on this team after this weekend and yeah two great wins in terms of you know looking way down the line in NCAA tournament position hopefully and all that but really just a, a, a very nice way to start the season playing good team basketball for two games and how do you guys as seniors make sure that we're not you know not starting to get too far ahead of ourselves because mm -hmm. there's a very, very long way to go, and, and you have to make sure there's that focus on every single game and being able to execute in the way that you guys did this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I think we know as reps of the Illinois Wesleyan team, we always have a target on our back, no matter if we're top-rate team in the country or just top in the CCIW. Every team comes and plays their best game against us, and uh, we just have to know that we have to play the best basketball we can to continue this success it's been super fun it's only been two games but um good things ahead as long as we stay locked in play as a team like we did yep I mean like you said it was a great first weekend great start great opportunity to play two ranked teams and kind of get some recognition out there for us and like Marcus said we're going to have a huge target on our back I'm um, a non-conference then as we get into conference as well so the big thing is just we can't settle with these two wins you know this is just the start this was the first weekend of what's a long season the goal is to get better every single game that's going to continue to be the goal to get better up until the last weekend hopefully get to Fort Wayne gentlemen Congrats on a very, very exciting weekend. Um, good luck on a slightly longer bus ride coming up to UW <laughs> yep. Stout than you had this weekend to get to the Shirk Center. But uh, go get them. Thanks for joining us. Thank yep. you. Thanks for having us. We'll be back in a little bit with Cannon Boyd and Sophia Feeney. They say inside every challenge is an opportunity. At Illinois Wesleyan, you have the power to seize that opportunity. Discover the tools, the mentors, and the experiences to take on any challenge and shape not just who you are, but who you will become. The best college in Illinois for jobs is right here. Tap or click now to start your free application and break through at Illinois Wesleyan University. And welcome back. Our final guests here in week 11 of Titan Table Talk are two of our Titan women's volleyball players, sophomore Sophia Feeney and junior Cannon Boyd. Ladies, welcome. How are we doing today? Thank you. Good. How are Pretty you? Good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm, I'm good. Very exciting weekend of Titan athletics all around. We've gotten to recap football and men's basketball a little bit. And now uh, we wanted to talk to you just for a few minutes at least about the final regular season games this past Saturday. Um, you know, one of those, those weird things in volleyball, especially with us having the last week by in the CCIW, uh, it feels like it's been a while since we've actually played a conference match, mm -hmm. which is yeah. unusual for yeah. most sports as you get to the end of the season. Um, but getting to get in a few final non-conference tune-ups, uh, center a 3-1 loss on Saturday morning and then came back with a sweep of Wisconsin Lutheran on senior day in the afternoon. Um, and then, of course, a, a real tough test with WashU before that and getting to see some some higher end competition outside the conference before heading back into the playoffs. Um, I want to talk to you uh, first a little bit about that Wisconsin Lutheran match, a great uh, you know, sweep for senior day in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, 10 kills, 5 assists for Taylor, 10 kills and a 533 hitting percentage for Jordan Pierce, getting to be a hitter out there due to yeah. the depth of the center room. But um, uh, any takeaways from, from that one that you saw a nice bounce back win after the morning? 
I mean, I think that we just really came together after that first set. We figured out some of the things that we needed to work on and make better going into that second game, and I think that we did exactly what we were supposed to do, turn things around, and it felt good. I think we were also frustrated about the first loss, and we knew we could have beat that team, so we came out and just finally pulled together and mm -hmm. had confidence in that second match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, you know, when you schedule the the level of schedule that Kim has tried to do over mm -hmm. the past, I mean, really seven, eight years now, right. and, and be able to play as many high-end out-of-conference teams as you can, I mean, you're going to have a lot of practice in those bounce-back mm -hmm. matches and needing to come back from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's something really close you think you could have won. Sometimes just uh, it doesn't all come together at the same time. But uh, one of those big advantages has always been for us that Shirk home crowd. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Ten and three at the Shirk Center this year. And, you know, obviously you grew up here and, yeah. and got to spend some time around here. But for the first, you know, season that you've played here, Cannon, what's been your reaction to that kind of home court advantage? Gosh, I mean, it's just surreal. Like, I love, I love being around that environment and just the – energy that the gym brings you and I feel like we do our job on the court and it just fires up the crowd and vice versa and I think that it ultimately just makes us play a lot better and I'm really appreciative for all the people who come out and support our games. Yeah and as much as anything else and you tell me if that's true from the player side of things but I think that was the the biggest part of the you know that set of three wins Millican or Central Carthage mm -hmm. victories or uh um back in uh, the early October mm -hmm. at Shirk Center and um, just setting up to host the CCW tournament and mm -hmm. get that little extra advantage because there's, I mean, good, good teams, one through six in that conference tournament. I think yeah. probably any of the six are, are capable of winning it. Uh, we'll get to see either North Central or North Park on Thursday night. And, of course, North Central, a, a very tough match up there in Naperville this year and, and North Park, the two-time defending conference tournament champion. Mm -hmm. um, we get through that. Hopefully another tough test awaits on Saturday, but getting to play those at home because of what you accomplished in early October, mid-October, big deal for you guys? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Huge. Yeah. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, what What is the, the feel for you guys after, you know, getting some good non-conference tests and anything in particular that you really felt like, okay, these are things that we want to get ironed out before CCW tournament play? Yeah, I think that playing those tougher teams really exposed some of the, the weaknesses that we had, and I'm really excited to work on those things going forward throughout this week in practice so that we can really, I don't know, change some things and fix some things going forward. But I think we're a very talented team, and our weaknesses aren't always weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So it's also just finding the consistency of bringing our, our talent in every point. Yeah, we say that all the time. Like, we are a very, very talented team, and we just got to find and figure out ways to turn it on and keep it on throughout the whole match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the uh, nice aspects, too, is that, you know, if someone's having a little bit of an off day, there's depth at almost every position right. that you can give someone a little bit, a bit of a breather mm -hmm. in the box, mm -hmm. collect themselves for 10, 15 points, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. and, you know, see if you can ride the hot hand somewhere else. And sometimes it's a hard thing to, to do or to be able mm -hmm. to sit on in the moment, but also... This roster is a lot deeper than it was maybe eight, nine years ago consistently, and it's it's mm -hmm. a fun thing to see in practice, too, yeah. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our practices are very competitive. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our scrimmages are tougher than the actual games we play, which <laughs> yes. is awesome for us. So Yeah, I think we all know how to score on each other as well, and it really helps us to push each other in practice. We know what each other's weaknesses are on either side, and I think testing each other and pushing each other to our best mm -hmm. will really help us. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like you can prepare and you can scout for another team, but when you have someone who knows you way, way better than mm -hmm. another team, well, they're going to attack your weakness and right. yeah. have a little bit of a chance to work on that, mm -hmm. too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, the other big aspect of Saturday was getting to celebrate Senior Day. Uh, before that 1 p.m. match against Wisconsin Lutheran, um, five seniors, for those who were not there, Jesse Sariev, Morgan Harrington, Abby Erdman, Carly Keel, and then Jordan Pierce finishing off her fifth season as a Titan. Um, there was limited time for, to some degree for both of you to get to play with them, uh, but any, any fun stories, any fun memories um, as you look back on, on your time playing with those five? There's definitely a lot of memories. I've only, this is my first season with them, but they all bring something completely different in the best way possible to the team, and I don't know. I would say 
One of my favorite things, just off the top of my head, is Jordan. Every time I come on, she always lets me know whether or not I'm supposed to be on the court. I tend to forget sometimes whether or not I'm on or not, or when Hannah or one of the middles are serving for me after a timeout, I'm like looking at her and I'm like, am I on the court? Am I on? She's like, yeah, come on. Get on the court. <laughs> but yeah, love them all. I also think they all bring like humor mm -hmm. um, to our team, but also amazing leadership. Like our captains, Abby and Jesse bring incredible leadership. And I don't know what we're going to do without them next year, so it's awesome, and I hope that we can bring a fraction of what their leadership is next yeah. year. But, yeah, definitely. They lead by example. And, and there were several years in there. I know it's, you know different coaches kind of rotate through doing the, um, the volleyball captaincy interviews. And one of the things that in the couple of years I've sat in that room that you always hear from people interviewing is how much they've learned from those who are one or two or three years older than they were. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes both in a positive and negative way, things that former captains tried and didn't work and they would do differently or much more often than not, things that they really respected and thought people handled well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is it's one of the biggest things about that program in particular, and I don't need to tell you, you're sitting there watching it, but um, the, the preparation, the lead by example factor in terms of helping the you know, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors who are going to be sitting in that seat is a really big deal. Yeah. Um, and the, the hope is that uh, that group will have another couple of weeks to play together, right. but uh, yes. a, a lot of excitement certainly for this week. And what is it like uh, for your guys preparing for a game that you don't know who you're going to be playing until late on Tuesday night? Um, I think it's about us right now um, coming in and just getting 1% better, finding those weaknesses that we had this weekend and just working on those. And then Wednesday we'll get in there and kind of scout who we're going to play, but just focusing on us mm -hmm. at the beginning of this week. Yeah, I think all the things, all the components that we need are with uh, within us, and we've shown that we can beat each and every team that is in our conference. So I think just building our confidence back up to the way that we were during that winning streak and – finding that team again mm -hmm. um so looking you know kind of off the court kind of a little volleyball focused here um so if I, I know obviously you know staying in town to go to college a place you're very very familiar with if we were to look back you know junior senior year of high school and then um you know as you're looking at the recruiting process looking at okay basketball volleyball academics mm -hmm. what do i want to do where do i want to end up what is it that ultimately led us here? Um, honestly, I kind of always knew it was Westland. Um, I, my parents kind of made me look at other schools, and I always knew deep down that it was going to be here. Um, growing up here, my dad obviously helped Coach Rose. So I grew up in Shirk, always at the basketball games, and I just always knew I wanted to be on the court here. So it's always just felt like home. Not much of a decision process yeah, to make there. Not much. That's the, the making you go visit other schools, I was a little like, you know, what we were trying to do with yeah. my sister, you know, a little yeah. bit too, seven years ago. So um, definitely. And in Canon, obviously a little bit of a different search process for you as you were looking to, you know, transfer coming off your sophomore season. Mm -hmm. um, aside from a good and well-established program whose starting libero was graduating, um, how do we find ourselves where we are? Um, I think one of the biggest things was the coaches. They, I, I was looking for people who are dependable and a team with a great culture and coaches who are going to push us every day at practice. And Kim and Ty right off the bat showed that that's the kind of coaches that they were. And I kind of had an interesting situation, like it was halfway through the school year. But I believe Soph, you were, yeah, she met with me. Um, no one was on campus. It was completely shut down. So I had like half of the experience during my visit, but I heard from a couple of the girls and I heard great things as well. And I just, I knew when I came that this is going to, this was the place. So. Yeah. And what's it been like for you kind of having to step in as a newcomer to the program, but also someone who's really kind of had to dig in and take on a leadership role right away on the defense? Um, I, I feel like I'm really comfortable being a leader. I was a captain at my last, at the last school I was at. And um, I don't know, I, I feel like I went at it head first and I was ready to take on whatever role the team needed me to take. Um, but I've, en I've enjoyed every second of it. So, And I just want to say that Cannon has helped our team so much this year. Um, on the court, she brings such a competitive fire 
that no one else on our team has, and I always know that she's going to get the ball up no matter where it is. <laughs> so, And she tells us that, too. So, <laughs> across the gym, it's fine. I got it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Every Next time it's up. She's got it up. <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of those things that's really, it's fun to watch if you're sitting there, and almost sometimes more fun to watch on film. Because um, we were talking about this, I think, in the case of both Hallie and Alyssa and yourself, uh, maybe a month or so ago with Kim and Ty, is a few of those points, I think, from maybe the first tournament where you've got libero setter back row just flying all over the place like running backwards trying to get one mm-hmm. hand under the ball mm-hmm. um and that level i mean i think it's level hustle that, that kim and ty and every teammate would expect mm-hmm. but it isn't that everywhere and it isn't always that sell out to get every single hand under every ball and that's it's that you know just little little things like that mm-hmm. that uh are very good demonstrators of the culture and the the Every mm-hmm. every play is all out to hope we can save something back mm-hmm. there. Yeah, yeah, we call it our dig or dive mentality. Every game, yeah, that's what we go for, and we tell each other after every point, mm-hmm. dig or die, dig or die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, both of you, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we do have one final question here for Soph because we're going to put this on film, uh, and we're not just going <laughs> to leave it to a conversation from before this. So uh, Dave Feeney, your dad, um, among other things, a rather accomplished pickleball player, and um, your goal is to to beat him by when? Next year. So, Dad, if you're watching this, (laughs) I'm coming for you on the pickleball court. (laughs) We're going to make sure he's watching it. He sees it. And we're going to give him a little bulletin board material for him right there. Mm -hmm. I'll be there in the stands (laughs) cheering around. I got a big sign. Just say, dig or die? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, good luck on Thursday hopefully on Saturday, but one match at a time. Uh, Pack the Shirk Center this Thursday night, CCW semifinal against either North Park or North Central, whoever wins that 4-5 or match on Tuesday up in the Chicago area. Hope to see you there. Good luck, ladies, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Go Titans! Woo!